when I'm very hungover, I'll have the shower running in the bathroom and I'll be laying on the floor next to the shower. Completely nude. <laughs> like, as, <laughs> as nude as the day I was brought into this earth. And I'll be just so hungover, right? And I'll just be laying near the shower. And it'll be so hot. It'll be, like, I want the room to be steaming, almost like I'm trying to recover from an infection. Like, <laughs> yeah. like I, I need steamy air in the room. Yeah. And then every now and then, I'll just open the shower door and sort of like, crawl up to it and just put my head on the floor and just, like, drink some of the... <laughs> drink drink some of the water off the shower, like, the shower floor. Like, I'm like... Hello, welcome back to another episode of Doing Bits. My name is Jack Connor, and I'm sitting with the uh, the PowerPoint presentation man himself, Wade Cousins. How are you going, mate? The intoxicated Wade Cousins. The I would intoxicated. Say. I'm a little bit fucked right now. Yeah, but that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. How was your uh, day today? It was stressful, dude. Yeah. So I'm. Run me through. Sorry, it. let me just run you through it. So I'm, you know. As one of the non-contributors out there, I am on the doll like mm-hmm. a f- fucking, like a f- one of those. You know what I mean? I, I don't want to. I don't want to label them, right. but I am definitely a part of that crowd. Okay, and it makes me sick every single day. I'm on it, but like, I'm, but I'm not calling them anything. Okay, well, my mum's on it. She's great, mm. but fucking hell, these non-contributing, like you know, whatever, whatever. Yeah, but the a, a, a part of my thing, right, is that I have to sign up for this job. Like, I don't even know what it's called. It's like a... Job keeper, job seeker. Well, no, I'm on the job seeker thing, but it's um a a job like learning, like ha- learning how to apply for jobs program sort of thing. Right. So you like, the, and it's three weeks mm-hmm. of Monday to Friday, eight mm-hmm. hours a day yeah. of learning how to do like resumes and shit. Mm. And today I had to do a um, PowerPoint presentation Unbeknownst to you. Un- yes, exactly right. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Like just at the end of the day, like, okay, by the way, at the end of the day, you're going to be doing a PowerPoint presentation, which I, I haven't even used PowerPoint <laughs> since fucking 2013, I think. I didn't even have PowerPoint on my computer. <laughs> I, I quickly hopped on to fucking, like, some Microsoft bullshit and was able to use it for free. Yeah. Got a free trial or whatever. Mm. And it was awful. It was god awful. Like everyone in the class, mm. no one wants to be there. Like she, she started off the fucking call as saying like, "Okay, so um, tell us your name. Tell us a bit about yeah, and why you've decided to do this course." And every yeah. single person was like, "My name's blah blah blah. I do blah blah blah. And the reason I'm doing this course is because it's mandatory. Otherwise, they'll cut off my payments." <laughs> and, and and she's like, "Oh, well, you know, that's another one of them." So, and she works for a non for profit like agency so she's getting fuck all cash oh. and no one wants to be there oh. she's not getting any good money to be there so yeah. it, so it's a it's negative vibes in the room <laughs> negative vibes and just what I, just to uh cut no, you off there no no you're good mate you're good uh, for those on uh just listening on audio you should head to the youtube version uh wade sent us a uh <laughs> sent, sent me a um a snapshot an action shot of him listening to the um what was it? It's a it's a Zoom call, it's like a just Zoom, a Zoom call. call, like PowerPoint presentation bullshit. Yeah, and uh, just for the audio listeners out there, you're there no, no, you're good, mate. You just um, for those on uh, photo, you would think it would just be listening a on audio. Yeah. <laughs> but just only one a side pota- of a potato the... that's been left on the shelf for too yeah. long. It's starting to sprout. You can't see <laughs> if you're awake or asleep there. No, and <laughs> it's such a funny thing because um a couple of times the uh instructor, whatever you want to call it, the teacher, blah blah blah, she has said um she thought my screen was frozen. <laughs> because because I'm literally laying there with it with the computer like the laptop on my chest mm. and the the computer uh, camera angled down at me yeah. so I look awful <laughs> and I'm not moving and she's like oh, I'm trying to speak and she's like wait I think your your screen is frozen I'm like, no it's not <laughs> and I, I'll start waving and she's like oh okay cool yeah. you just hold up three yeah. figures <laughs> <laughs> and it is uh it is just stressing is uncomfortable mm. i'm not learning well, well you're watching the born identity while you're <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm also watching old matt damon films when i'm meant to be doing this but like you know any all of the paperwork shit i can fill out real easy today yeah. i sort of got sprung on it a bit because i was watching some movie in the background right and then she just calls my name out and she's like okay wait so what have you pr- 
like got to present to the class and i'm like oh, fucking what <laughs> what am i meant to present like yeah i had no idea and yeah, i was present like yourself i was like oh what? shit yeah and i and by this point i was i'd also been drinking a bit mm. it was thursday yeah <laughs> it's thursday in south australia i'm yeah. i'm drunk yeah and the footy's on and it's yeah first night of the footy mm. Three in three thirty in the afternoon. I'm not ready to do PowerPoint presentations, <laughs> especially ones that are just like, "Have you done anything?" I'm like, "No." <laughs> so then I just then I just start like fucking. Um, We're just stringing it together. Just just waxing lyrical like about like you know I have no fucking idea. I'm just like, what did I, you say? Well, what what was the presentation about? I I don't know. But the, <laughs> <laughs> the way I, the way I did the presentation was like um because we had these like certain industries that she wanted us to present on and after I did mine I found out what she actually wanted oh good and uh, what she actually wanted was like okay so let's say you're joining the construction industry you need to present and like say like okay what sort of tickets do you need if you're not currently in there to get employed by them sort of thing. I went in there like fucking Jordan Belfort, like in Wolf of Wall Street, and I was sell me this sell pen. me this pencil thing. I was like, okay, so I'm in the hortic- horticulture industry or some bullshit. I don't even know. I don't know the difference between horticulture and ag- agriculture. <laughs> one of them's plants. I think one of them's plants you can eat. I, I, <laughs> I, I don't know. So I'm just sitting there. and I'm like, all right. Um, a lot of people think. Mm that uh, the horticulture or whatever I said industry is booming in South Australia yeah it is for people who have um, experience in the industry but if you're like me you have been on seek and you have seen every single job you apply for needs one or two years experience and you don't have that unfortunately Mm -hmm. so what you can do is this and I gave like a full sales pitch like you know like for this thing and she was like I was this is not what I asked for (laughs) That like literally was just like no, no. What are you? What is this? Yeah. But but she was kind of, in another way, like sort of impressed. But she's like, you know, when I set out this assignment, I wasn't expecting that sort of feedback from it. And I, I you know what? I think that's actually interesting. And I'm glad she was like, sort of on board with it because I was just fucking. I was waffling, bro. You're waffling. I had nothing. I had nothing. And, you know, I thought I did a good job. Yeah. I've seen enough Martin Scorsese movies to get me through, like, a narration scene. Yeah. <laughs> How long did it go for? Um, That was the other thing, right? So, um, she, uh, for some reason, the, um, it must have just been the way we were called in the Zoom calls, but I was one of the first people. Oh, fantastic. And, 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 I, and I said to her, I said, I haven't finished the uh, my presentation yet. Can you, like, I'll do it in a, like, after the next couple of people or whatever. Because I I hadn't been paying attention until that point, and then I saw the two people in front of me, and I was like, "Well, they've done way more stuff than I have, yeah. and I don't know what to do now." So <laughs> I'll, I'm just gonna go do this bullshit. <laughs> so um, I literally like I saw what they did. I saw how long they went for. Mm-hmm. I was like, "I'm gonna do that long," yeah. but just talking. Just, yeah, just talking. While out. those two people were doing their thing, I was just writing what I was thinking in my head. And then I repeated everything I wrote on the Word document and sent it to her. Oh, my God. What do you think you get at? Like, do you get graded or do you just pass? I don't know because it's not a, It's not like you've signed up for a uni course or a TAFE course. It's more. It's this mandatory thing you have to do if you're on the job seeker payments. Yeah. So I don't know if you can pass or fail this thing. I think if you rock up every day, you've passed it. Like, I... Because I, I, there were people in the group who were... There were people in the group who went, like, did a lot. Like, you yeah. know, made this massive PowerPoint presentation. Yeah. There were people sitting there just going, like, read the fucking... Um, ingredients on the can. The ingredients on the can sort of thing. Like, that's how little they did. Oh. And she was like, okay, well, you know, if that's all you did, that's fine. Like, you know, blah, blah, blah. Just moved on. She just needs to, like, tick everyone off. I wonder if there was, like, prerequisites or something. It's like, you can't be four bearded ladies deep. Oh, bro. But it's like, oh, no, I failed. I, failed. I was... I, was yeah, yeah, I failed now. I was fucking lethal, bro. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, I was like, um, I was making jokes and shit. You know, she fucking... Ha- you know, sh- she's from Perry. She's in Perry. Most of the people who are in my class are from, like, Subiaco and uh, fucking Penrith and shit, like, places yeah. in Perth. Um, but she's from Perry. And she mm. did... She does not get my sense of humour. Oh, God. I was, I was talking about, like, um... 
I said something about how gay it was that Ed Sheeran sold out the like broke the records like some fucking like poor ranger yeah like broke the records at the all of the stadiums in Australia oh did like, he? Yeah, he went to like Subiaco and she like broke the fucking attendance record. Oh, really? And shit. Yeah, wow. for like live performance. Oh, shit. It's like you, fucking Ed Sheeran. And you didn't like that? No, no, I just brought it up as f- funny. Yeah. And she was like, you can't say poof ranger. <laughs> <laughs> and you were like, no, no, I can. I can. Well, I, I have, did. I have. <laughs> I have said well, poof ranger. I, I, you know, I, it's been a long time since I've been in a classroom. Yeah. A lot of the people there, though, like, you know, you survey the crowd. I'm with, like, fucking... There's a few people in my class who are, like, fucking older than 50. They're, oh, my God, you would love this cunt. He was, like, more than 60 years old. <laughs> okay, so he's... <laughs> yeah, I just remembered it. So he's more... He's, like, fucking 68 years old, right? He said, like... They asked him, like, oh, what's the biggest distraction in your life? And he was, like, easily fucking Smash Bros or, like, um, <laughs> CSGO. It's, like, he looks like your granddad. Oh, my God. And then he's, like, uh, so what have you been doing in the last few years as far as employment goes? He's, like, um, I worked in the tech industry, like, IT for about 40, 50 years, something like that. Mm. But the last four years, he's been trying to get this dog hotel going. <laughs> and he needs about a $5 million investment. And I'm, like, this is insane. And now you're talking to me on Centrelink, like, yo. <laughs> trying to get a dog buy, hotel A gone. dog hotel. Yeah. And the way he said it was, like, you know, if anyone's interested in the... Oh, career, really? Yeah, he was looking it, for it, investments. It, it, it felt like that. He was fishing it, for cash. It, it looked like fishing. And oh, I was like, oh, my God. For a dog hotel. Shit. And you know what? I appreciate him. Like, I appreciate him being so honest because he said, he's like, oh, my biggest uh, waste of time is playing too many video games. He's like fucking 60-something. Mm. And also, his biggest dream is making a dog hotel. <laughs> and I was like, this is awesome. It's like, a strange su- juxtaposition between those two things. It is a strange yeah. uh, juxtaposition. And it is uh, the fact that he knows at this point in his life what he likes to do. Yeah. Is is awesome to me. Yeah, and it's pretty funny that he's sitting in Because I wouldn't want to be making a dog hotel at 25, let alone 65. Any, at any age. That's a horrible idea. You reckon? No one wants to take their dog and drop them off at a... That's a, that's a glorified fucking kennel. Yeah, but, you know, there are those cunts out there who, like... Yeah, but they love their dog. They, they love, love their fi- dog, They love right? Fifi. They and would I, never leave it in a Never pound. leave it in a kennel. No. Take no. it to the dog hotel. Five stars. Oh, five bones. <laughs> five bones. <laughs> five bones. It's five bones. It's five bones. Five bones a night. You get five bones when you walk in on all fours. Oh. You got to be on all fours when you're in the hotel. Like, even the staff there are like crawling around. We're like, we got to be like the dogs. Oh my God, they do like the lady in the tramp shit. Yeah. Like, you want your dinner? Like, they like have the bone and. Oh. oh. I want my dog to be true like that. I mean, it would be fun to work in a kennel. But I would just... <laughs> I, I think I'd get over it pretty quick, though. I think you'd be like... Um, I'd equip all the dogs with, like, walkie-talkies and shit. <laughs> like, they would just be walking around, like, fucking barking. And then, yeah. like, you could hear, like, a like a domino effect mm. bark throughout the kettle. Like, one would bark, and then you'd hear it on the, on the speakers, like... <laughs> I'm not sure if you've seen uh, the original... Uh, like, well, not the original. Obviously, it was the remake of uh, Rise of the Planet of the Apes. It came out in, like, 2013, 2014. Yeah. And they put Caesar... Apologies for stopping the podcast here. The good quality audio that you're listening to right now dropped out while we were recording the pod. Luckily, this only lasts a couple of minutes, and then we're right back to the good quality. All right, back to the pod. Who was the ape who ended up fucking ruining everything? Uh, they put him into like a kennel for primates sort of thing. Yeah. And he started communicating with the other apes and then that ruined the world. Yeah. You would do that. Yeah. You'd put your fucking super smart dog in there. Mm, Yeah. And it would... Yeah, it it doesn't walk on all fours. It only walks on its hind legs. (laughs) (laughs) It's like just walking around like that. I was thinking about... uh, I think I was thinking about Kung Fu Panda the other day. (laughs) For some reason, I was thinking like, yo, I don't think that could happen. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, I don't... I can't remember why. And I, th- I think it might have been like, Yo, <laughs> that could happen. I just clip that, clip that. Right? No, no, I, mean, I was thinking, like, you know, I love Jack Black, mm. but that panda, like, like the amount of like dexterity he showed, never happened. Never happened. <laughs> Don't worry about the talking or anything like that, or the fact that he can go like, 
with his yeah, thing, uh, and it yeah. explode, explodes explodes That is true. You'll be like, man, this panda's agility is real <laughs> off. Like, something. Have you ever met a panda? Yeah, they, they, all they do is fall over. They don't even fuck, which is a crazy <laughs> thing to me. Because even if I was like, if you could boil me down to like my base atoms, at least six of them would still be trying to fuck other atoms. Like, you know what I mean? Like pandas, you get Wang Wang and Foony, you show them panda porn. <laughs> yeah, well you, you get her a bit, w- like, you know, wet your fingers, like warm her up for the night sort of thing. She's still not ready for fucking Wang Wang. Dude, Adelaide, Adelaide actually did that. We showed him yeah, panda porn. Panda porn, yeah. trying to get him to fuck. Adelaide panda porn, that is a grim... Desperate so- Adelaide Zoo hopes panda porn will inspire love. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the New Daily um, article posted on... You see a date there, Waddles? Uh, the 20th of September 2018. 2018, yeah. So... This could have been changed by now, but so this, this is, was a, a news story. Yeah, yeah, for this, for this did ago. come out. Um, so our zoo in Adelaide has two... You could call it the Adelaide Zoo. The Adelaide, <laughs> you could, you could. You could. We could actually call it the Panda Zoo. It, they fucking love they it They fucking and, love them, right? And they don't do anything. The, the pandas don't thing, do anything. No. They're not even fuck, like Wade said. So I don't even think they masturbate. No, they can't. They got claws. I don't think that's true. They don't have claws. They're do, a bear. Do you, do, you, do you reckon like dolphins can masturbate? Dolphins, <laughs> which is kind of, <laughs> which is kind of like masturbation. You might have to, <laughs> might have to bleep that, um, that a uh, hard R word. Not, not actually the hard R, but like the. Oh, this is getting crazy. <laughs> no, oh, wait a minute. Bleep the word that I said prior to that. Oh, uh, Jack. Oh. Hold on. Oh. Might have to start again. Oh, give it a sec here. Um, hold on. You have we to cut this out. We're fucked on the. We uh, we will be right back. Yeah, apparently on the fucking... Your micro SD card is full. All right, sorry, we lost you there for a minute. Yeah, the recording dropped out, but the Recording we, fucked out, but we're back. We are back. Um, We were talking about pandas fucking, so for those that were, like, hanging on the edge of their seat, <laughs> we're going to get right back into that. So, again, just to recap, Adelaide Zoo, we have two pandas. You can't fucking give them enough bamboo to fuck. They refuse to fuck, mm. um, and they're called Wang Wang and Funi. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're fucking... It's an wh- interesting name. It sucks. Wang Wang and Puni. And Puni. And Punani. Punani. You know what I mean? Like, it's so close. Yeah. And they refuse to fuck. They do refuse to fuck. Um, with endangered species like the giant panda, the notion of close but no cigar is not good enough. Once again, the zoo's hopes for the pitter-patter of little panda paws lie with artificial insemination. <sighs> They've tried it before unsuccessfully, but Adelaide Zoo director Elaine Benstead explained Adelaide is not alone here. Outside China, they've actually had very mixed results. Oh, so they get homesick. <laughs> they're homesick. They don't want to fuck they away from home. Love China. They, they don't want to. Fu- it's like I don't want to shit anywhere else besides my oh home. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe they're, they're a bit temperamental. I don't care if there's a hot chick in the room. <laughs> I'm shitting at home. Yeah. Vienna Zoo has been successful with panda breeding, but there are many other zoos that have not achieved pregnancy, despite having um, had pandas for as long as, or even as longer than Adelaide Zoo. So did they show them porn? Because that's what we were... Is that porn? I think, yeah. Porn? What, what did the article call it? Pandas are in the mood... Oh, no, we're not. We're not getting any. <laughs> not getting any uh, gas on this. Anyway. One. Yeah. Anyway, the, the fact that these pandas won't fuck is crazy. Jenny. It's hilarious that they cost so much money. Like, let's say, have, have you? There, there was a show I watched which was uh, interesting. It was called like the last. Uh, I think it was called the Last Man on Earth. Yeah. Right. And um, and there's like a chick in the episode. And he ends up falling, not falling in love with her, but like you know, mm. what else you doing? Yeah. You know what I mean? After you've driven around the Lamborghini in the pu- parking lot and you've made enough, like, fucking Wilson balls, like, yeah. well, side, <laughs> like, to get you going. Yeah. You need a chick. Of course you need a chick. Or a partner, at least. What are these pandas doing? They're doing nothing. They don't do not anything. Not a fucking... Th- they, they're not interested. They're the most useless, two useless objects in Adelaide. They're and so cute, though. That, that's are. the problem with them. Like, yeah. you know, when you hear them eat bamboo and they're, like, crunching on the bamboo, it is awesome. Yeah, look at him. Yo! 
and they fall out of trees. They yeah, just, all, they the just time, fall. all the time. They're like rolling around yeah. and shit. They, they're. I, I can't believe they're a part of the fucking ecosystem. To be honest, like it, it is. It's shocking. one of those things. Like you know, I'm not sure what they're the natural predator of sort of thing. Anything that is willing <laughs> to fucking sink its teeth into it. But they're not fucking anything. Yeah. You know, that's why I've always been... I've always been spurious on, uh, like, animal, like, number estimations. It's like, we know that there are 23 mountain lions left in uh, Dallas, America, or some bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, how do you know exactly that there are 23... They tag them, don't they? But that's the ones that they have found. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it's like, you know, they give birth, whatever, then... I guess, yeah, they tag them, don't they? No, they, they, but they tag... The, but that's only the ones that they've found. Like, that's 23 that they know and, of. You know, and, and, and for something as um, interesting as, like, a cheetah or... I'm trying to think of some other fucking big cats. But there's some things like snow leopards or something, which is like, we've never actually caught one on camera. Yeah. So it's like, how do you know exactly how many are left then if you've right. never seen one? <laughs> like, yeah. They like, just go up and they pick, like, find, just, this everyone, is snow leopard shit. Everyone just sees it out of their peripheral and like, oh my God, <laughs> I, think, I think it was a snow leopard. It's like the abominable snow yeah. man. <laughs> it's like that Ricky Gervais bit where he's like, he's like, no one in the history of the world has ever caught a ghost on camera. Mm. It's always like, Oh my god, I can hear something. And they're like, where is it? And it's like, oh, it's over there. Oh, it's gone now. It's gone. Because <laughs> like, if you're watching a David Attenborough documentary and you're like, oh, this is the uh, the dingo from Australia. Mm. It's over here. And, and then it's like, oh, he's gone. I'm like, where is it? Oh, it's gone yeah. now. Yeah, you don't know. worry You about stop it. listening to the cunt, <laughs> wouldn't you? <laughs> you definitely stop listening to him. I was, sure. I was talking to Stu the other day about dingoes. Because I would... It would be hard for me to distinguish between... Dingo mm. and Doggo. You know what I mean? Like, if I was just fucking in, like, Penrith, fucking Perth or whatever, mm. and I'm just out in a, like, in a fucking old mining town, and I'm just sitting there eating a meat pie, <laughs> a good old meat pie, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And then a fucking dog come up. Yeah. It looked like a dingo. Mm. Well, but my, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know, I'm going to give him a scratch behind the ear. Yeah, Dingoes he, are cute. Then he might go you. Yeah, but a fucking... A Roddy might go me as well, you know what I mean? Yeah, true, yeah. I mean, like, uh, okay, so is... Are dingoes closer to domesticated dogs or are they closer to wolves? Like, wolves. I is, would can, say dogs. Di- closer to domesticated pets? So. Yeah, well, they're approximately... The wolves are massive. Yeah, wolves are terrifying. Yeah, they're, they're yeah. so big. They, yeah. If you put them on their hind legs, they're going to stand taller yeah. than you. Yeah, I, I could kill them. I, I often think I, I often think Ava isn't re- reaching her potential. <laughs> <laughs> that's your job. Uh, Just for context, that's, sorry, that's, that's German my German Shepherd. German Shepherd. And someone's looking at her. People She's, think that's your sister. No, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I often look at my German Shepherd and I'm thinking like, you know, she's six years old now. Mm. Reasonably well trained. Mm. Loves fetch. Mm. Apart from that, fuck all. Fuck all <laughs> else. And it's like, dude, you've been... That's half your life. Yeah. Well, so you don't think she's... What, what you is have it? mastered fetch. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, but even I mean? then, she's a bit spotty with it. Like, sometimes, yeah, even then. Sometimes she brings even, it back. Sometimes she's like... Nah, no. sometimes she takes it to the person next to you and you're like, fuck, I guess we're not playing this game What anymore. do you want her to do? Like, sign language or something? Like, what's no, her, no, what's I, her I, want her, I want her to smell like... Um, like dove soap. Like diabetes on me. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, if, if she can smell my right foot going off... And she just starts licking it or whatever. I'm like, okay, I might need to go for a walk in the morning more often. <laughs> I think I'm losing circulation to that limb. Oh. You, know, you have some dogs that like uh, like smell diseases. Yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd appreciate if Ava could be like, well, oh, bro, you are fucking, you are really riding the line between like pre-diabetic and f- diabetic as and, fuck. And <laughs> needing an insulin yeah, shot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, don't dogs... Some of them dogs do that. Absolutely, they do. Yeah. Didn't yeah. we look that up in like one of the first episodes? You need to train them. Like some dogs, you know, because apparently German shepherds are good for that shit as well. They're good police dogs. A mm. lot of German shepherds are police dogs, sort of thing. Do you or, wish Ava was? A lot of police dogs are German shepherds. I said it the wrong way around. Do I wish Ava was? Mm. No. Yeah. I love Ava. Yeah, but imagine if she I, could I, do I sign love, language. 
I don't think any dog could do sign language. No, but <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm exaggerating. But you know how those police trained dogs, like when they walk, like the dogs like looking up and then they walk with you and then they do those like loops yeah. through the person's legs. Imagine if you could get Ava to do that. The problem is with, you know, it's such She's a doing, like, ins it's, and outs. it's such a tough gig because you send in the um, like the bomb defusal robot, right? Yeah. And if that fucks up, like in Hurt Locker, then you send in the pet. Mm. And they got to sniff it out, and they get they get blown up all the time or shot. Yeah, and then they're like, oh, like you know, still you, a bomb. You, you have you have fucking trained this dog from yeah. like Kingsman level, like you know, <laughs> day one, like you're training this dog, mm. and then you're just like in Mogadishu, yeah, and you're like, is that hat on the floor <laughs> tied to an IED? <laughs> Send Ava over there to pick it up, <laughs> and real. she just picks up, boom, <laughs> blows her out of the fucking sky. Yep, guess it and you're like, bomb. you know what? You d- we'll hold a funeral for her when we get back. But, you know, <laughs> when we she get she back. she served her job like, yeah. unfortunately, like equipment in the military sort of thing. It's like you know she ser- she served her job. Yeah, I'm sure. Her role. I'm sure and that it, she was thinking that when she got enlisted and shit. She's like, this is my purpose. I got to serve my country. You know, th- there's a lot. I was watching a show the other day, right? Have you heard a... You know who Jeremy Clarkson is, right? Mm. He's done this show called, like, Clarkson's Farm. I might have even spoken about this, but I'll speak about it again. Um, on Clarkson's Farm, like, he's running a farm now for no reason yeah. at all. This is the bloke from Top Gear. From Top Gear. Yeah. He's running a farm. And he said, um, to get a fully trained... Like, so they say you don't train it yourself. To get a fully trained, like, sheepdog, it's more than 20,000 great British pounds, which what? if you're talking Australian money, is more than 50,000 Australian dollars to get it fully trained. And it, and even once it's fully trained, apparently it takes six months for it to warm up to you. So like then it then like so it forgets its previous owner's command sort of thing and you're the one doing the commands. Oh. This is this whole training process. What but he said fuck? it's like it's more than 20,000 pounds. Shit. And I was like, yo, like for a fucking, like a border collie. Yeah. Like just chase around the sheep. To herd sheep. But they're that fucking good. Yeah, they're, they're, they they're, are incredible. They're literally bred for it. And I, I've seen Doco saying like, you know, oh, are we, um, do they really want to do it? And then when you watch these shows where they're at the door in the morning all they and do. they're fucking shaking, they're yeah. like, just let me out, let me out. And, they, and then they chase the sheep. Mm. Like, you know, and it's the best it's day ever purpose. for them. It's their purpose. Yeah. Ugh. It's sort of tough because it's like, you know, we bred that purpose into them. But at the same time, like, they don't fucking complain. It's not like he's sitting there being lazy. Yeah. They w- he he wants to yeah. chase those sheep for miles and miles. Mm. It'd be different if we were, like, trying to get fucking, like, pugs out there <laughs> oh, to, to round, round the sheeps up. It's like, clearly they can't do this those... or, or want to do it. They're like... <laughs> And they're sneezing and coughing everywhere, and the the cold air of the farms fucking up there. They they got like pneumonia. What what is the smallest dog that you world? that you would, <laughs> no no? What is the smallest dog that you would uh, agree to own? Like you know what you the next fifteen years probably this Jack is Russell. your Jack Russell probably a Jack Russell. I they're cheeky though. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like they they got too much personality for me. Yeah, what do you want? Like a dull. Like yeah, I, I, a I want mach- so, I a want, fetch machine. I want like Eeyore from fucking uh, Winnie the Pooh, where he's like sort of sad about things. <laughs> you want a depressed? Like dog. he gets up and he looks at the sun. And he's like, I think I'm gonna get burned, and he goes back and lays yeah. down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you want that I mean? kind of dog? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when it's raining, he goes and stands out in the rain. <laughs> <laughs> you just want to go yeah. outside to have a smoke and just see your dog just <laughs> standing in the rain. And I'm like, yeah, it, you know what? This week has been like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, been, it's been a tough week. <laughs> Fucking hell! What, yeah, what? I, well, because I don't think I'd want like a super small dog. I think the smallest dog I would get, and I think it's mostly for comedic value, so I don't even want necessarily include it. Mm. Which would be sausage dog. Yeah, I would get a sausage dog. Yeah. just for the lols. It would you know be what I mean? Funny. But the smallest dog, I would legitimately like. You know, like this is a part of the family. I will, you know, would be like a staffy. Which, yeah, which is still like a medium sized dog to a lot of yeah, people. I mean, they're thick. They're oh, are fucking thick old boys. Thick as fuck. Thickums. Do you remember that dog in like episode, I think it was episode one, where we were looking at dogs that looked like an embryo? Oh my God. <laughs> look, look at, <laughs> uh, just, just write in. Was it British Bull Terrier? No, no, write in pig dog. It will come up. Pig dog? Yeah. This? No, no, that fucking thing. <laughs> no, maybe it doesn't come up. 
Australian pig apparently they're called pig dogs in Australia. Like really? they they fucking like isn't eat it like wild boars and shit. British bull terrier, isn't it that? That is the technical. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, dude. It does. It looks like an embryo that was. It looks like it was born too early. Mm. It doesn't look fully developed. For any anyone out there that's just listening, do a quick Google of the British Bull Terrier. I'm pretty sure you would have seen it before. It's and, got, if you, and if you do own one of these, you are a fucking... It's got Rory's eyes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Rosalind. What, oh, Papa what Fox. A, what a fucking awful it, looking animal. Is. You know what? Apparently, but they're banned in Australia. Why? Is it um, their looks? <laughs> no, no. Apparently, it's because of um, fighting dogs. Oh, you know, like American pit bulls are sort of like sort of banned, but if you breed them, there's some other thing there, right? Uh, yeah, Apparently, yeah. this breed of dog very violent is um, you know, you get a you get a hard time registering this dog in Australia. Look uh, at the nose cone on this fucking thing. <laughs> <Nose cone. laughs> Look at it. Oh, Yo. I could smell you from fucking kilometers away with that. I hate it. Anyway, um, I wanted to show you this. It's a fr- fucking frightening looking dog. It like, is you know, terrifying. Like if if you um, you know, if if you're like a toddler, right, and you had a bad experience for a dog with with a dog, right? Yeah. You went up to a dog and it like sort of was like, Meh. yeah, and you would have dreams about that dog at night. That is fucking awful. That's like demon spawn. Yeah, it's there's nothing aesthetically pleasing about it. It looks like it's got Down syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> the more that I look at it, I'm like, it's a bit yeah. downsy. Any, like, you know, anything with, like, less features. <laughs> you know what I mean? The smaller eyes, smaller mouth, and, like, bigger head. Like, <coughs> I bet you these dogs yeah. are into wrestling. They're, I bet oh you they Oh, my God, are. they love Well, they are. Cena. They're fighters. <laughs> They're fighting dogs. They're fighting dogs. Yeah. They're into wrestling. I'm sure, like, you know... If people out there have them, or whatever, I'm sure they're lovely dogs if you train them right. Yeah. Like like any dog, apparently, like you know, there's no bad dogs, just bad owners, sort yeah. of thing. I'm but sure that dog's a lovely dog. I'm sure it is. But it's fucking sh- it's hell, a shame that it's an nice so- But also, is that less attractive than your fucking average English bulldog, which looks like definitely? You reckon? What do you mean? Bre- look at look that at that the- look at that white thing right there, right with the red collar. And then open a new tab and bring up like an English bulldog. Well, it's slobber and jowls and shit. Yeah, but th- there's something... But that's there's... like if a dog, like, fell from the earth and landed on its face. <laughs> yeah, but there's something cute about that. Look at his... Well, look there, at there's his something fu- derpy about it. Like, you <laughs> yeah. know, it's like a bird with a broken wing. And you're like, I want to rescue it. I don't think yep. it could live by itself. <laughs> <laughs> That dog looked like it would fucking kill me with a knife if I was sleeping. <laughs> that dog on the left, like fucking hell, bro. Come on, English bull terrier. I mean, the, yeah, the English bull t- uh, bulldog. Look is at that fucking. Y- you picked the nice one. Look at that fucking thing. Yeah, but it's got all wrinkles and shit. Look at that fucking thing. Look, it looks a bit aggressive there. No, but it doesn't look aggressive. It looks that looks more downy than the fucking dog on the left. No, it does. This dog looks more prison. That dog looks more daycare. <laughs> you know what I mean? Looks Pri- l- that dog looks more prison. That one looks more halfway house. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, prison and daycare. Yeah, like I, I don't. I just um oh, look at that. Like I hate the fucking um droopy face with like the red eyes as well. Yeah, but I could also. I love the idea of being able to go. Up this to do- it. this dog would help me bury a body. It I wouldn't would, even yeah. need to bury it. It would eat. It would eat the it flesh would. of the. It would. The victim. It would. Um, I wanted anyway, to show you sorry. this. I wanted to show you this. A. Happened, I think it happened yesterday. Um, a Red Bull pilot has landed a plane on top of one of the tallest buildings in the world. No shit. And the world's shortest runway. Just 27 meters. Wow. Just landed 20. a plane on it. Yeah, and I'll just show you the clip. I'm from going it. to try. Um, it's pretty amazing what they what they put together here. So it's, I'm pretty sure this building's in Saudi, Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. And they set up this helipad. Look how cool that looks, Saudi Arabia, wild. Yeah, I mean, Red Bull's wild, man. So he takes off and gives it a go. Fucks it up. 27 meters this man has for a runway. Uh, and you're coming in at like probably what like very 100 k's an hour. Like yeah, is like way his, more. It's his wife sitting there just like watching him. Uh, I'll try another one. 
So this is his okay, last attempt. Good. I'll let him know. That sticks it. incredible. Absolutely sticks the landing on it. He only needed 21 meters. So then, so he lands it, and now he's going to get off the helipad. Yeah. Uses NOS. <laughs> NOS. Sure, yeah, as you do. That dope's that shot. Yeah, you got a drone following him. Look at that. It's like a sni this is the Snyder car. Yeah. <laughs> I love when he comes across the front. That looks awesome. <laughs> but yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. Um, yeah, broke a world record, or, or at least set one. World's shortest runway. Okay, so this is an interesting question to ask you, because um, how much money would you need to be a passenger in that plane? Let alone fly the fucking thing. I don't know. He attempted it 650 times on a normal runway. So what's if I offered you $50,000 and I was like, Jack, you got to do this with this cunt. you got to sit in the passenger seat. I would. And go, like, over and over again. Yeah, I would do it. You would do it for 50k? Yeah. I think you're lying. No, because if I had a, if I had a parachute in my thing, I could I could definitely do that. If you had a parachute in well, your you thing. Well, you think that he doesn't have a parachute? Like, he needs to bail out? Of course he does. No, of course he does. But that's like saying, like, you know, if you were James Bond, like, you know, like, we just like to execute all these people. It's like, yeah, well, if I had a fucking Kevlar vest on... Just, yeah. just give me a silence pistol and Wait, I'll, so you I'll, I'll say take out the whole crew. I can't wear a parachute. I would say that you would be so frazzled by the whole experience, like, you know, coming in and reattempting it, reattempting it, reattempting it sort of thing. Mm. You, I guarantee, this is something I would have done. I would have thought we were going off the edge and I would have deployed the parachute in the plane. <laughs> <laughs> Almost like I, like I punched an airbag and it like hits us in that's, the face. That's you know I mean? how you fucking um, yeah, yeah. go over the And then the we edge. fall off the Burj Khalifa yeah. or whatever the fuck he did. I think it is the Burj Khalifa. But, you know, I, I think it's, you know, oh, you're so cool for like saying, oh, yeah, I could do that easily. Yeah. Oh, what, like go in the airplane with him? He's a trained pilot. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? He'll be right. Uh, he does if, say... If I, if I was fucking... Like, with a trained heart surgeon, he's like, dude, let me just, like, fix your organs real quick. <laughs> yeah. Like, I wouldn't be like, yeah, dude, let's just do open heart surgery then. But there's 50 grand on the line. Well, I get to... S I, I would not do open heart surgery for $50,000. You wouldn't do open heart surgery for 50 I wouldn't grand. let someone perform open heart surgery on me for $50,000. What if 50, they just want to look around? They can do that up my asshole with one of those, like, <laughs> kaleidoscope things. You know, like, these things you <laughs> Kaleidoscope! Do <laughs> so, like, you, you click in the new, like, photos, it's like, chunk chunk. Chunk, chunk. Yeah. Like, you know, you know, different parts of SeaWorld or whatever. I'm yeah. sure my asshole is very similar. <laughs> no, it's not. No. There's it's not? No, there's no way no, you can see your heart you know, from apparently, your ass. Like, you know, when they fix your heart, they have to go through, like, through your groin. Yeah. So, fuck it, dude. I'd much... Oh, well, no. I can't remember what I was saying, but, like, I, I would also not like to do that. <laughs> I can't remember what, you were, what stance I was taking, but were, I'm not also doing that either. You were opting for a camera up your ass over yes. them cutting open your chest. Yes, easily. Oh. What, you would rather someone, like, with a hacksaw, or not like a hacksaw, but, like, you know, a rib separator, open your chest and work on your heart. No, just have a look. Just have go, a look Go around. up through the anal canal with a camera. But I don't think they can see my heart from the anal canal. Of course they can. No, they can't. Go up the phone. It's <laughs> not. <laughs> how long is this? <laughs> you got like, they go up there, bro. They, they go up there. I know they do, bro. Yeah, like, they that, do. That's how you put stints in people's hearts. So like, you go through their groin and shit. So it must be the same shit. I don't know. You go through the asshole, through the groin. All right, would you rather someone get a rib separate, like, you know, cut open your chest and work on your heart, or go through your fucking... For 50 grand? 50 grand, dude. That's so little. For them to do, just open me up and have a look around. <laughs> you, you know, mo you know, like, uh, like the, the stats of you, uh, surviving the anesthetic yeah. is like a, is a risk. Sure. Let alone like the, and then they got to keep it there for a few days and hopefully like there was no infection mm. that goes sort of thing. And you're doing that for 50 K. Definitely. That's a Yo, life changing mate. amount of money. 50k? Yeah. That's not a life-changing amount of money. Yes, it is. We would spend that in the next eight weeks. I wouldn't say. spend it all. It'd be gone. I would, you would. No, no, I reckon you'd be like, oh, you know, like we're going to go to the casino. Tonight, I'd drop whatever, 10 yeah. grand on, yeah. on doing crazy and, shit. And if it didn't work, then you'd drop another 10 trying to chase it. No. I've seen no, you at the not, cast. I've seen you, mate. I've seen you. Not at the cast. I would drop 10 grand on fun shit, but the other 40 I could, I'd put into investments. 
If you play that with that money, and you, right. and you would have like your fucking, you go through that anesthetic and have your like ribs separated, and people look at your heart, yeah, for forty k, yeah, well, for fifty grand, well, like ten k of fun, and then yeah. forty k of, but I still like get... your missus yelling at you, yeah, well, <laughs> if she's yelling me, it. yelling at me I after guarantee heart su- shit. <laughs> after heart surgery, I'll be like, you, you're taking the piss now. <laughs> Surely you're carrying on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a carry on. That's a carry on. Yeah, nah, I would. Yeah, fucking no. Forty k just seems so low. Yeah, but I trust modern medicine. <laughs> <laughs> I give it. A, I'll give it a crack. Bro. Good old college try. Do you know who uh, trusted modern medicine? Who? Kurt Cobain. And he got shot with a shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> Courtney Love killed him, dude. He trusts the modern medicine. <laughs> he trusts the modern medicine and got shot with a shotgun. How long do you reckon you could hold your breath for underwater? Not long. Like, without, um, like, when was the last time you tried to Probably do Probably, like, test? two and a half minutes. Oh, okay. Why? Well, two and a half minutes? Yeah. 180 seconds. Oh, no, 150 seconds. Yeah, it doesn't matter how you divide it. It's still two and a half minutes. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm trying to break it down into my math. Okay. Which is Well, you only operate in seconds. You're fucking going and you're like, one, two. <laughs> yeah, that's just... Three. Yeah. And you're going to get 150, you reckon? Yeah. That's... I, oh. could, I reckon I'd be pushing... Nah, under the water, maybe... Well, I reckon Well, two that's minutes. where you hold your breath. Nah, two oh. minutes, I reckon... Probably two minutes. I'd be fucking passing out, though. Yeah? Yeah, proper passing out. There's no way I could reach five minutes or something like that. Yeah. There's no fucking way. Yeah, you've seen those, like, free divers who go down. Like, they're just chilling down there. Mm. It's insane to me. Yeah, they're built for it. How long do you reckon you could? Well, whenever um, <laughs> I have to hold my breath... What, in the shower? Yeah, like, you know, like... <laughs> Well, you know, like, you know when you put your shampoo in the in your hair yeah. and then you look up at the water and it washes it out and you got to hold your breath, the thing. Yeah. Every single time I do that, I go like, <gasps> after it. <laughs> Why? Because I'm holding my breath. Like, you know, and you know what? I, I, you're making fun of me right now. Yeah. But who's ho- who's practicing this? Who's? Why are you holding your breath while you're washing your, washing your hair? Because I'm looking in. I'm looking into it. Yeah, but why are you holding your breath? It's hit me in the... It's going out my nose. I don't like it getting on my nose. See, that's one thing I've... I've oh, never, you know, pe- people who, like, do backflips into pools and shit, mm. and the, the water goes up your nose when you do that, and people say, oh, just blow out oh, when you go in. Yeah. Fuck that, uh, dude. That's why you don't backflip into pools. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that, yeah. That's the reason. It's the only reason yeah. why I don't. Yeah. Otherwise, I'd be fucking... I'd be fucking... I'd be, like, fucking flaring. Tony Hawk doing, like, 900 into the pool. <laughs> flaring so, yeah. into it, just on the side. No, yeah, um... No, obviously I'm not. But I hold my nose like this. Like, uh, a lot of people hold their nose like that. I can hold my nose like this. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Why is that funny? That's ridiculous. Because you're fucking doing the duck face when you're in the shower washing no, your hair. It covers my nose. So yeah, no I water gets on I get the utility. but the- Cover your nose right now without touching it. You can't. Oh, yeah. It's fucking, I'm the next level of evolution. What a, what a feature that uh, <laughs> I, I don't have. You look ridiculous. My nose don't get... <laughs> I look ridiculous, but I'm, I'm alive, aren't I? Yeah, why are you holding your breath in the first place? It's well, insane. It's <laughs> insane. You're in the shower. All right. Yeah. Have you ever, like, stomped your foot on the shower plug? Yeah. And was, like, in hoping to, like... How far ho- high have you got the water level? Like, by, like, keeping the shower plug? Well, that, that, that far, which is... What did you fill up the container? What are you, what are you doing? I'm, r- I'm running underneath the door. <laughs> like, You're right, it's running underneath it, the door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> I think so. Because, you know, I have fallen asleep. I, I often, like, when I'm very hungover, I'll have the shower running in the bathroom and I'll be laying on the floor next to the shower. <laughs> completely nude. <laughs> like, as... <laughs> As nude as the day I was brought into this earth, and I'll be just so hungover, right? And I'll just be laying near the shower, and it'll be so hot. It'll be, like, I want the room to be steaming, almost like I'm trying to recover from an infection. Like, <laughs> yeah. like I, I need steamy air in the room. Yeah. And then every now and then, I'll just open the shower door and sort of like, crawl up to it and just put my head on the floor and just, like, drink some of the... <laughs> drink drink sh- some of the water off the shower, like, the shower floor. I'm like... Oh, <sighs> that's... Fucking yeah, disgusting. Dude. That's yeah. like a crime scene. Yeah. You like if someone yeah, opened yeah. the door, they'd be like, Are you okay? And, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. and then your yeah. head would just pop up like 
No, most people would think like that's insane. Oh no, it is part of my. Life. It's a part of your regular. Something I'm gonna do tomorrow morning. Yeah, that's <laughs> before about... I have my course. <laughs> I was gonna like cold shower for a minute, yeah. knock the dust off, and then just lay down for a while and yeah. just get the steam going, like mm. you know, sweat it out a bit. Yeah, I do. And I, just drink a little bit of shit off the floor. I was thinking about building a uh, sauna. Um, How do you build a sauna? Uh, well, it's sorry. I'm just grabbing a drink here. What are you oh. fucking saying? How do you build a sauna? Oh no, no you build a you build a sauna with uh, basically a wooden box, hot rocks. And just pour hot rocks, uh, heat up the hot rocks, and then, um, which is the ele- electricity part, <laughs> and then um, pour hot water on top of it, and then it will create the steam. Steam. But it's quite expensive for if you want to build like a, you want one that more than one person fits inside. Mm. You don't want to build one if you're going to build one that only, like a fucking the toilet cubicle at my place. Like if I, you could build that. That's easy. But then like, where are you going to sit? Yeah. Where's the fucking hot rocks? And I also be? feel like saunas are for like rich whites and foreign <laughs> people. Okay. You know what I mean? Like my dad uses a sauna now only because he can afford this nice gym. Mm. But like foreign people, I feel like they build the saunas and they live in the saunas. I have never seen a brother in a sauna. I have. have you ever seen a black person in a sauna? Yep. Multiple times. Bullshit. Yeah, they're quite excited. Bullshit. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not buying that. I mean, you can say you saw one. No, that's like saying you've seen like an eclipse, a solar eclipse. I'm not buying that. <laughs> they're very loud about it. They're like, fuck, it's hot in here. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, man, <laughs> it is hot in here. Like, they're very vocal about how hot it yeah, is. Yeah, they just yeah. keep talking about how hot it is. Like, it's fucking hot in here. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, we're in a 85 degree sauna. Yeah. Yeah, me and you together. But same like, room. you get some old fucking like 70 year old Greek guy in there. Yeah, and he's so sweet. He might die in there. No, like, the, you know, how long has he been in there for? <laughs> I got in there, and then I left before, like, both of I've his... I've done end- that. Yeah. I've done that. How are you still alive? No, the the Asians love saunas. And oh, my God. Yeah, there was sure. this, um, when I was going to the aquatic center and regularly saunering, the, um, there was this old Asian dude sitting there, very skinny, looked very athletic. He, I walked into the sauna and he was sitting in like a yogi position. Like he had fucking... He What's a the, yogi I position? I don't fucking know. Like, you know, the legs crossed and he was doing... Like, <laughs> yogi? Yeah, no, he was like... He was doing all this shit. Yeah. Like, and he was sitting there and I'm like, oh, this That's a yogi position. I don't know. I don't know. That's is what, it? That's what, what it was yogi? called. What is a yogi position? I don't think that's a real thing. Yogi position. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He wasn't doing any. He wasn't of that. doing. There, no, there it is. Yeah, yeah there it is. The yeah. Pre- he was yeah. doing that. Was yeah, he? he was doing that shit. Um, when I was sitting in there, I'm like, oh, this guy's fucking. He's been in here for a mm. while. Like he didn't even. He heard the door open. Didn't even phase him. He was yeah. in another world. I and have, then I saw in the in the exactly how this guy is sitting in the um, crevice crevice part of his thigh and his <laughs> kneecap oh, was a pool of sweat. What you, well, like, just sitting like, like a sweat bubble like you know when you fold your arms and then like that area can Get kind of sweaty. fill up in the shower like if you're sitting in the shower like that and it, it was that up. bad yeah there was a pull and both sides of his knees and I'm like oh this is fucking this guy's this bloke is cooking in here he's slow roasting he's dedicated to the yogi and then <laughs> and then his his thongs were on the floor in front of him and then he must have been done with his like yogi meditation or whatever and then he that put his feet down and that sweat ran down his legs into his thongs and then when he walked out it was like <laughs> I don't know about that and no 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 so that, that makes me uncomfortable it made me feel sick but at the same time I sort of respect it Why? because I uh, do you remember the uh, the I think it was the Vietnamese monk or maybe the Malaysian monks were protesting the Vietnam War. Yeah, they set themselves on fire. And they'd take that position yeah. and set themselves on fire. They were sent and, and they wouldn't react to mm. being Burn. burning alive. Yeah. Wild. How do you get that zen don't where, like, where you just do not feel that sort of pain? No I, I kind of feel like, and I don't want to call bullshit on it or, or anything like that, but, like, you know how, like, um... It is now known that a lot of the kamikaze pilots that in, in Japan in um, World War Two were on speed and shit like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're on, like, massive like amounts up. of those sort of drugs. I wonder if it was that sort of... Maybe, like, some sort of, like, massive amounts of hallucinogenics so they love those maybe. mushrooms and shit like that. Maybe. Because maybe just... how do you sit there in that position and set yourself on fire? Have you ever fucking stood 
too close to a heater. Like, <laughs> yeah. You're like, after a while, you're like, oh, for fuck's that, sake, I'm going to have to relocate. That, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? That's how I'd sit if I was going to set myself on fire. I'd like, <laughs> start at the feet. <laughs> that, start at the feet. Yeah. This bloke, for just the audio listeners out there, is, is sitting in the yogi position with the, you know, the feet. I don't think yogi position is a position, Yeah. Well, by the way. I'm calling it yogi position toes up (laughs) but he's got his palms facing forward and his two index fingers facing down at his feet um it's very confrontational it looks aggressive really he could be doing a kamehameha for i I was thinking you know oh my god this is gonna sound so bad but like um it always does it always does right yeah i was thinking what would it take for you to do that level of protest and i'm not talking about like setting yourself on fire i'm talking about like just sitting on like the road and like gluing yourself to the road for like climate change or some bullshit where you're just slowing people's Morning. like roads to work like down yeah. sort of thing uh it would be a lot like if there was a meteor and no one was paying attention like the movie don't look up yeah that's when i would start protesting I'd you would like, you would literally protest that probably There's no way you would why because you and i would just be like people aren't fucking listening you and i are gonna like you know we're gonna have a party like we're not we're not protesting trying to make people who aren't listening figure out that the end of the world is coming you know what i mean the point of the protest is to convince people that aren't listening but why would you spend your your last precious hours on earth if if there was an option convincing people of the end of the world but it wouldn't i wouldn't do it you would would never do it i don't don't think you would ever protest you're not letting me answer not letting me answer it i would never do it if there was only a couple of hours left but if it was fucking years away and no one was paying attention you would i would protest i would protest i'm not going to spend the last hours of my on earth holding a fucking sign that's up. like that don't look up movie yeah if yeah but that, that, that's why i never liked it but that if there was it goofy if there was years left then yeah. i would because there's enough time then to deflect sure but if there's no none of you reckon you would actually definitely you, yeah. would, you would protest. Well, like, I don't want Earth to be destroyed. I'm not going to fucking have a beer while there's an asteroid on the way. You reckon? No. You would. Yeah. Definitely. Would. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah, for sure. I'd, I'd, what would I'd, it take I'd, for I'd, you then? If there wasn't... So, whatever you say, it, it, if there is nothing that you would never protest, then fair enough. But just know that if there is something that you would protest, it is more valuable to you than the entire planet. I would pro- I would protest like people attacking me <laughs> like, personally. <laughs> like I'd, I'd be like, no, stop doing. I did not say this. What like, if they took know. away movies? Oh yeah, yeah yeah. No okay, movies. Yeah. They yeah, shut yeah. down Hollywood. If, if for some reason they like just removed like, from Australia from, from all the streaming services. Yeah. They were just like for some reason TV shows are cool on every single thing, but movies are like now poison yeah, to and the only in Australia. Yeah, oh man, I'd have to. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't know what to do though. Like, I, I wouldn't. You know, the 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 view of like people's the way. Okay, like when I see people like protesting um, gun control, or whatever in America, or whatever they like like spray painting signs and stuff like that. It never gets anything done. Yeah, I so wouldn't I, do I wouldn't do that. Yeah, there's no way I would. I would. Um, I'd probably try and, like, assassinate someone. <laughs> that, I refuse to pick up a side, but I will take that, people that out. Would, that would spark change. <laughs> yeah, well, I think... I think a pro- if, I, if, if I was, like, if I was so upset about this thing that I was willing to be like, you know what, I'm going to fucking go down in a, in a world of fucking firearms, but I'm going to fucking kill this cunt because he's making this bill, which with is a fire bullshit. Up. With a firearm. I'm not fucking kill him with my teeth. Like, yeah. <laughs> Like, you know, like, if I could do that, yeah, then, yeah, like, I, I would do that. But, like, it's th- it's literally only for that. Anything else, like, I don't give a fuck. I think if enough people, like, say they did ban movies in Australia, for whatever reason, there is enough people that would want to, uh, the, the people that changed it to hear their voice. And I don't know if you're going to go out well, the front of, like, you know, the... How do you even ban movies in Australia? Yeah, but, like, like, let's just say. Let's just say, for whatever reason. I don't understand. Yeah, that's the sort of thing, right? Are they coming to my house, like, in Viva, V for Vendetta, like, um, where they, they banned art? Sure. And they're kicking down the doors and making sure you don't have any... Sure. ...anything about art. Yeah, in, it's in North the, Korean. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's, North, it's that sort yeah. of thing. Like, they will come and take yeah. all of your... I, I think I would... Um, I think I would go out... I think the like, people... Like, on my shield and that sort of thing. Yeah. But, but if, it was, if it was for some bullshit fucking... 
know, <laughs> you know, but if it was some bullshit like modern like gun po- control, <laughs> yeah, yeah, gun control's I fine mean, in Australia. I won't, I won't protest that. That's not my gun control's fine in Australia. Yeah. We haven't had a massacre since the last massacre. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think the people that are also movie buffs in Adelaide, like, say online, would be like, okay, let's get together. We're all going to fucking go to this one spot. And then you caught wind of it and be like, hold on. There is like, because it'd literally be maybe 100,000, probably more people. I think the fact that there is thousands of people would go, okay, well, at least I'm not protesting alone. What do you reckon we'd do if um, <clears throat> they were in the roaring 20s again? They bought. They brought back for this century the um, prohibition. They oh, would protest that. Protest that. Well, you I, wouldn't protest it. I wouldn't all. protest it. I just. I'd just be drinking a lot of alcohol. Like I. I wouldn't. You wouldn't be, join I, I, Stu. I, w- I wouldn't be in the street protesting it. I'd just be behind the scenes drinking alcohol. Stu would. The same way, if anything that like I loved sort of got banned like that, I wouldn't be like at Parliament House being like, this is wrong. I'd just be, like, secretly doing it. Yeah, but what if you couldn't access it? Like, you didn't have... Well, th- You didn't have a plug for it. Well, then, yeah. I guess then... Stu would pick up a sign as soon as he heard saw the fucking headline. Yeah. He would be like, oh, they're getting rid of my He might ears. be the most efficient worker of all time if he fucking... It would be <laughs> incredible. <laughs> I'd like so would never, would never be higher. Never be higher. <laughs> How many sales did you get this week, mate? <laughs> <laughs> be pretty incredible. She was selling pipe to like lay like internet lines between like <laughs> fucking Indonesia. And, yeah, yeah. yeah like, he's selling like underseas pipe. He's like got, finding Nemo shit. He's got government <laughs> contracts now, like just because he's sober. Yeah, yeah. That that is one. Maybe that. Like you know, if they brought back prohibition, yeah, I'd be like one of the people who's like, okay, well now we're running. Fucking, I wouldn't do it for pokies. Now we're moonshining, moonshining shit. You know I wouldn't I mean? do it for pokies. I wouldn't do it for smokes. I wouldn't do it for smokes either. I'd do it for booze. There's very few things that would get me off the like get me to leave my house to pick up a sign and it's probably a meteor drinks uh i would say if they started culling entertainment that would be fucked do you reckon we live it like because um i I wasn't a you know i I have a love-hate relationship with that don't look up movie because the way you said like you know a media or whatever do you think the rest of the world is that dumb? Like, sort of thing where, like, people won't believe it sort of thing. Definitely, yeah. Like, just misinformation or disinformation yeah, where, like, you sure. know, like, people will just, like, be like, no, that's not going to happen. I don't you think reckon it's, it's going to be sev- that bad? I don't think it's as severe as the movie put out. I think, like, you know, all the scenes where, like, the news reporters have their head in the sand and all sure, that stuff. Sure, yeah. The, the, the movie wasn't very subtle. No, but, like, the news uh, back in the day was, um, you know, they're... It meant to be emotionless. You're not meant to know the reporter or whatever. Like, just your six o'clock standard news. You're not meant to be like, oh, that's Trevor or, or whatever. Now, in especially American mainstream stuff, their personality on there. Like, they give their two cents and, you know, they're doing almost doing, like, youtube shit yeah, on there. Nowadays, bizarre. it's like people are married to their reporter. They're married to their, like, uh, you know, who's the Fox News guy? Who's the the big Fox News guy? Um, Rush Limbaugh. <laughs> uh, he was. The, I think he was the old. Uh, I can't Fox remember. News guy. But anyway, uh, like you know the the Fox News dude or the guy on CNN, they're well, married ha- to their. How reporters. do you feel about like someone like Piers Morgan, like from the UK? He's very balanced. News. Yeah. You think he's balanced? Yeah, I think he's great. I think he does a. You like him? Yeah, he does a very good job of like curating his own thoughts. He's I, like self-critical. I have a. And he's not afraid to push either. See. I, uh, I kind of dislike him. I mean, like, he had Tate on twice. There's like I did respect that's that. respect. Yeah, and especially the, after the first time where he spoke over yes. him the whole time, and, and he recognised that, and then he got him back on and yeah. played chess against him, and he yeah. lost sort of thing. Like, yeah, see, that was cool. Yeah, see, cool. I, I count him as very like middle ground. He's a true journalist and stuff like that. So I wouldn't expect him to, if you went on the Pierce Morgan show and you were in that like Don't Look Up movie and you're like, there's a fucking asteroid heading towards Earth. He's going to be like, oh, yeah, no worries, wait. Okay, well, well that's... Yeah. F- okay, but do you think he doesn't have an agenda? Should journalists... Everyone has an Should agenda. journalists not have an agenda? Because if you... Let's say you look at a, um, a sports analyst, right? Let's say someone who covers the um, AFL league. Yeah. Um, people... Like, people say that a sports analyst, someone who covers the AFL league, shouldn't have a favourite team. 
you think Piers Morgan doesn't have uh, his favourite level of politics, or you think he's completely impartial in the middle? He should separate himself when he is conducting professional activities. Like journal... Yeah, okay. Well, Like in an interview. I, I would... I would say he the hasn't done blur. that the in, in, a, in, in a few places. Oh, like, for you know, sure. Like, and yeah. I don't blame him for that. Everyone's biased, man. Yeah. Like, it's very hard to be impartial. Impartial, especially yeah. when it comes to, like, personal yeah. politics. But that's something like that. that he should be striving towards or any journalist should be striving towards. Like, mm. I, when I write a, you know, like, it's, there might be an article that I find that I have a personal take on. I'll put at the bottom of my article my personal opinion sure yeah and yeah. then make sure it's bolded and stuff like that while i've reported on everything objectively like from the press release from what they've said and this paragraph is my personal that's mine opinion. yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's mine like you know a message from the author or something like that sure, and then yeah. i'll give my two cents be like i don't think you know the spacesuits for fucking artemis 3 are actually going to work out because of the timeline with this and this and this okay so and how, how do you feel about america then we're like you know they are you know the american 350 million people yeah. they seem to mostly be like you know from an outsider's perspective half of them watch Fox, Fox News yeah, and, and don't listen to anything else mm. and half of half of them listen to like MSNBC sort of shit mm. and get that perspective yeah some of them listen to other shit I know yeah. like there's a generalisation sort of thing yeah, but um but like, do you think that's sort of dangerous? It's for disgusting. It? It's yeah, tri- it's, it's tribalism. Well, right? It's tribalism at its, it's finest. That's a good word for it. It's yeah. tribalism. It's literally tribalism. Yeah. It's the fact that you've even selected a team to play on is retarded. When like, you're reporting the news, like you shouldn't <laughs> yeah. be selecting a team at yeah. all. Your team should be the United States. Yeah. That and but the, all of these. Your news- team should be getting. If you're watching the news, you should be getting the. The, the correct truth. the correct facts yeah. <laughs> like you know yeah but what's funny is that they they push the agenda of like oh you get the facts these certain facts from you know CNN or MSNBC or whatever and then you get different facts from Fox News they each might they, they and this is like also a journalistic uh, this is when journalistic integrity comes in and none of these mainstream platforms have it anymore even the UK ones like BBC and all of that, they don't have it either. They will. Do you reckon leave- we have it in Australia, or it's all fucking biased? It's all liberal. It's all uh, like the liberal and well, it's liberal and Labor split. Like you yeah, know, yeah, like yeah. Sky News is pretty like there, there's, yeah. There's not a lot of independent opinions out no, there. No, really. Yeah. Um, but these these mainstream channels, they they select only the facts that they want to tell you about. So it formulates a narrative. I don't know if they're sitting around in their fucking room going like this. Like, oh, we got to formulate this narrative. I don't think that's happening. I think there's too many people involved for, you know, closed-door meetings like that to be happening. Maybe you hear something from, like, you know, the six companies that own all of the mainstream media sure. that's like, hey, don't report on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's easy to not do. Or, or like, report on it because you have to, but go easy on us. Like, yeah, sort of thing. maybe like, something like that. Like that. Yeah, I don't yeah. think they're sitting in the room, like, saying no, these words. I don't necessarily think that, but, like, I think sometimes but they leave certain, out certain news things. channels go harder and certain news channels yeah. find the other side of the argument yeah well like fox sort of news thing. might report on like say fact b c a and f yeah or whatever but then like msnbc, MSNBC will yeah. report on like g f like mm. you know and only and so they can formulate an article and make the headline fit what they have written okay so if you're a if you're a um a blue collar working american sort of thing what do you do do you watch both news cycles like from like let's say you watch the extreme left and the extreme right and you try to make your own opinion after watching both of them or like do you go somewhere else for your news you have three options i think in news you either don't listen to it at all or you don't listen to it and wait for stories that have longevity more than two days if it's more than two days and they're still talking about it, it's probably an important story. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because shit, like, there's yeah. car crashes. Most shit is out of the news cycle in 12 hours. It's or gone. Whatever. Yeah, It's yeah. gone. Everyone crashes their car. <laughs> Everyone's house is on <laughs> fire. It's the 6 o'clock news cycle. There's someone stabbed. Especially, it happens every day. Especially in a yeah. country like America. Yeah, well, also here, like the 6 o'clock yeah, yeah. news here. There's yeah. someone has crashed their car. We, we see it here with a, with a population less than, like, New York City. Yeah. Like, can you imagine it in, like, a fucking 350 million oh population God. country? Fucking hell. D- Detroit's news would be a two and a half hour podcast. <laughs> it still of shooting. sucks here. Oh, it, it, I 
promise you it still sucks. Yeah, <laughs> bang, and you're like fucking like dodging bullets and shit. Like they yeah. don't report on any of that. But um, yeah. So you got two options, uh, three options. Sorry, don't listen to the news at all. Don't listen to the news and then wait for the important stories and then do your own independent research. Uh, consciously going to conflicting news sites. Yeah. And then try and derive your own opinion out of that. Or you watch everything. Yeah, but then yeah. the downside of that is you can't watch everything because you also sleep like the rest of the human beings. Mm-hmm. And the news doesn't sleep. Yeah. So the people that try and they also say that they see everything, I think are ridiculous because... I'm in the news trenches every single day and I don't see everything of science and space. It's news. impossible. It's literally impossible. And the fact that you think that you are intelligent I'm, I'm, enough to string together like this master plan of like fucking. I'm, uh, I'm, this unless is you're the person creating the story, it is impossible for you to watch everything. No, you can't. You're, you're going to miss some things. You can't. Yeah. And like, how do you think that you have the like conspiracy theorists that go like, well, I read, I'm I don't like CNN, but I still read CNN. It's like, well, you're probably not reading it in the right light, then, are you? Yeah. It's like they have their own biases. That like, I don't. There is very few people that will read every single bit of news yeah. and then take out their biases. That is like few and far between people. It, it, it seems um, and it's impossible. It, it seems like what we're talking about mostly is like American news, if I'm honest. Because it's when Western you news. when you look at Australian news, it's not like uh, Channel Ten uh, strictly right and then Channel Nine are strictly left sort of thing. Like it's yeah. completely like m- most of the time you just get whatever news thing, and whoever is the presenter probably has some biases or whatever. Like if you get yeah, like, but they're reading off the prompter. But you know, but you get like someone like a, like a, you know like a Carl Stefano or whatever. Like yeah. he's a pretty popular morning person, or whatever. And he often he goes off b- the bites sometimes. back at bullshit and stuff yeah. like that. That's morning and, and news. That's though. morning news, yeah. right? But like, um, I don't think in Australia we really have like, oh, if you listen to Channel Ten, then you're getting this sort of news. Yeah, I feel like if you're in America, mm. like, and you like you know you listen to Fox, you're not getting. The full story. Yeah, I don't. I don't feel that way in Australia. I. I don't. I think the the structure for news at six o'clock is poor. Like you get two minutes. You get one minute segments on each story. You need a, all the important stories jammed into the first five minutes because that's when everyone is watching. It's impossible to actually flesh out the story you get all the cliff notes that's all you're getting yeah. is cliff notes for whatever happened yeah. you get proper journalism is 60 minutes yeah but then again you only got 60 minutes <laughs> yeah like yeah. you know yeah like tracy grimshaw's 60 minutes is probably mm. the best journalism that's ever came sure. into australia yeah to be honest like yeah. it's that's when you actually flesh out a story, and usually it's a sad sop story about whatever, like it is. you know, a neighbor I, dispute. I, I, or whatever. I looked at something the other day, and it was like this old sixty-minute story about Ivan Milat, mm. and which is the for people who don't know, is it's a an the worst serial killer in Australia or whatever. <laughs> and um, this is something from like fucking ten years ago. I only just watched it again the other day. It was this beautiful bit of journalism where they spoke to his brother yeah and stuff like that proper and, um, pr- out proper on the journalism ground. sort of thing it's on not just ground. like so th- four people were murdered today anyway we're going to move on to yeah. the, the crows actually just one and then <laughs> yeah. actually like petrol's down like, you know, like yeah that shit is like when the when the news cycle is that fast mm. like nothing is fucking yeah, no- nothing, nothing sticks out. with you yeah it's it's too fast it's nothing's fleshed out and because it's too fast it's like tiktoks yeah it's, yeah it's like you don't they, remember your tiktoks that they've adjusted the news to our like attention spans <laughs> the way we scroll through facebook reels or yep. youtube reels or fucking For tiktok sure. feeds they have because sure. honestly sometimes i look at like you know this is channel seven mm. a company has been around like rupert murdoch and bullshit and like you know years and years and they're doing like clickbait articles it's like yeah it's like you would not believe what this person said outside the magistrate's court today. Yeah. It's like what the fuck is this? <laughs> Why can't you just like you know this is the news? Yeah. This isn't a TikTok feed. It is yeah. so ridiculous. It is. It is rough. Like the the current state of the news is well, the public opinion is that it's gross. Like if you're a journalist, it is gross. And it is. It is gross. Unfortunately, it is. But you, but you do have like really good journalists amongst the rough like. That friendly Geordie's bloke yeah. that I sent you, like his house got fucking firebombed yeah. because of the journalism that he yeah. put into exposing the Victorian, um, well, 
uh, lawmakers, I suppose, oh. and the police. Obviously, this is something completely different, but um, there's someone who I love, like, you know, one of my main hobbies is, like, like watching film and stuff like that, and the person who I constantly look to, even though my opinion often um, is different than his opinion, yeah. is Mark Camo from the BBC. Because right. I know he watches the film and then reviews the film sort of thing. And even if my opinion is different, I value his opinion sort of thing as a journalist sort of yeah. thing. Like, as a, as a writer, he writes this beautiful article about, like, this is why I like this film, this is why I didn't like it, blah, blah, blah. There's my rating. Yeah, you can see your Whatever, whatever. And um, I've, you got to find the people you, you like. you got to find... But then you fucking run into people who just, like, find Alex Jones and then just love him and don't listen to any other news. Yeah. That's another problem entirely. We don't have to go into that, but... Yeah. But that is that, 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 is that creates problem. a whole another problem when you get too fucking yeah you get married to the people that are married giving you to them. Ben Shapiro and yeah. all that sort of shit. It's like you don't trust any of them. Yeah, and you just take the information that gets given to you, and then you form your own opinion. Yeah. It's impossible to be able to like distill the true story out of yeah most yeah, things I, that are like, these days. News. It, like if you weren't there, you don't know what happened. No, <laughs> like, yeah, literally. That's literally, if, yeah. if you weren't the one fucking photographer, like. Like you weren't the f- the photographer who photographed it, mm. you don't really know. No, no way. No. You saw it on, like on the internet, fucking nine days mm. later, and now you're making an opinion. And on then it. you got like the AI shit as well. On top of that, it's that's only going to make it harder. Making it worse is like you know it's it's uh, what's it called like um not poison. It's like uh overpopulating the industry of like journalists. I hope with all these uh, chat GPT bullshit where you can literally ask them to write articles for you, mm. there are still, like, real journalists out there who, there like, will be. That you have, there like, will be. you know, journalistic integrity sort of thing. Yeah. Where they're like, you know what? No, people want to hear my opinion. Yeah. You know, not some fucking bullshit. It's actually, it's unfortunate because it's really expensive to do on-the-ground journalism. Like, you got to send someone sure. out to interview people collect you know like you gotta have a crew with them the video guy an audio guy like why not just you know report on the news two minutes after the story breaks can you believe they used to do that like just like during wartime yeah like you know just send out this and you know what like journalists were like usually if you wear like some sort of journalistic sort of iconography sort of thing well the uh, the enemy would recognise you and not shoot at you because you're just there for t- like photographing the war yeah. instead of actually fighting in the war. Like, you're the one holding the camera instead of the gun. Like, they just sort of leave you alone because like, you're there to do some jur- journalist shit. Yeah. Like, that happened a lot in Vietnam and shit. Like, you know, mm. you just get people over there with video cameras and stuff mm. and video and all this shit. Like, it's crazy. It's weird. It, it, I don't think... Well, there is, there is journalists that went to Ukraine and stuff like that, but it is not as prominent as it once was because sure. again it's expensive to send anyone anywhere with mm. a team when you can just wait for you know the hashtag ukraine twitter feed to refresh videos and then report on that yeah like i do from here exactly right yeah so like you got a lot of these soldiers wearing like fucking gopro <laughs> yeah like, basically you know, post yeah. them on the internet yeah it's the first war that's ever been put on the internet which but is kind of wild right which is weird like, we're watching the war unfold on the internet. I watched the uh, movie American Sniper, and I thought that was weird, like, you know, the, um... And I don't know if this is true, maybe it's American propaganda, but the uh, opposition sniper, um... Like, you know, the rival of our Bradley Cooper, was, uh, like, he would kill American soldiers and then sell, v- like, VCR videos of them to people on the street and stuff like that because yeah, people cool. want to watch them. And now we just get that every single day. Yeah. Like, if you Google it, like, you'll see someone just walk into this place and people, like, trying to surrender and they just shoot their fucking head yeah. away. It's crazy, dude. It's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. We're getting a, a much up closer look at war than we've ever seen before. Yeah. Yeah, it's really, it really is weird that, yeah, you can just go on the internet and just be teleported to Ukraine battlefield. Yeah. And, the <laughs> way, and you know, I know it's, like, you know... When you're in that situation, it's different. But it's it's so interesting to me how quickly normal people... Because I bet if they were just in normal society, normal people that like, you just see down at the club or down at the fucking... Like, at your work or whatever, yeah. turn into fucking Savage. savages. Savages, man. As soon as the rules are turned off, like they, they turn into... They, they snap. I fucking will. And then they come back, and then they have to reintegrate into society. Mm. And then they're fucking, like, retarded and homeless. <laughs> You know what I mean? 
and then no one supports them. <laughs> no Everyone, one supports them. Everyone's like, we didn't even like that war, so fuck you. <laughs> yeah. Be homeless and be shitting yourself and stuff like that. Yeah. And with PTSD. Massive amounts of PTSD. Massive. Like, you couldn't even hold a dog yeah. for more than 20 seconds <laughs> yeah, without it thinking it's an, like... Takes in, you back. Infidel. Yeah, and, and like an IED. <laughs> like, is this an IED? It's like, yeah. it's a chihuahua. This is clearly a terror, <laughs> like a Trojan horse from the <laughs> terrorists. I'm going to have to snap its neck. <laughs> I do have a note here before we wrap up. Um, and I suppose I have to uh, set this up correctly and we'll just finish off this episode with this question no worries um, so back in the day when porn wasn't as uh, accessible as it is now where you could just hop on like you know you're a browser away from tits and ass. yeah you would have to go get um, you know VC what are they VHS tapes yeah sure and you know rent them or whatever Take imagine that you were back when porn wasn't accessible and you had to get v, uh, VHS tapes. Sure. And your dad brought home VHS tapes and you found them and you're like, oh, dad's got fucking porn. Some pornos, he's, yeah. He's yeah. Gas them up. And you take them. Would you jerk off to that porn? Oh, it'd be so hard for me because, like, I don't want to know what my dad gets off to. That's what I was about to ask. Would you jerk off to the same porn as your dad? Yes. <laughs> yeah. So the answer is yes, only because porn is like it's almost like it's like blood diamonds. Like you, like you, like you trip over them. Like you know, you're not going to find them in the supermarket. You know what I mean? Yeah. But like, I'm not happy about it. Yeah. But I find it, and I'm like, oh, dad's a fucking pig I can't believe mm. he likes this stuff and then yeah. I, and then I'll and then you yeah yeah the... and put it back into his drawer in the exact same way so he doesn't recognise that course. I've touched yeah. it but what if what if he recognised it and then he was sitting here like the next day he was like oh did you get to that part where uh, you'd have to move you know, out I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> what if you get to that part you're like oh you know when that that really good part and he's like oh I bust there every time I, would, I wouldn't be, be like, having oh, dude, I bust there as well wow I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't be having this uh, I don't think I'd have It'd be interesting, right? Because um, <laughs> do you reckon it'd bring you closer? Let's say we had that conversation. <laughs> right. I would be fascinated if he busted at the same pot I did. Yeah. Because like I bust, like you know, over such strange things. Like you know, <laughs> like it, it could it could be all like warm ups. Like you know what I mean? Like right. they're just doing layups on the court. Right. And then she like takes that. She's wearing like a shirt with just like straps over her shoulder, and she pulls that one strap over her right shoulder down. Oh. Done. That's Don't it. even need to get anything. That's why. If I'm in it, then, bro. Right, if you're sold, you're bro, sold. Bro, if, if I'm in love with the lady, <laughs> bro, and it's done, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, if, like, you know, if it was something, like, f- fucking, like, truly aggressive and, like, you know, like, something that you felt like, if, if I can't bust for this, I'll, I'll have to report it after. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, if your dad is, like, really down in the dumps, you know what I mean? Yeah. And you're like, you know what? I'll give it a go. But if it doesn't work out, <laughs> like we're, we're, we're not mates anymore. Yeah. And then you then you tell the authorities. Yeah. Or whatever. No, you tell on him. Yeah. Well, what about you? Like, you know, you, you catch your mum doing I mean, some bullshit. Whatever, it would be whatever. wild because I would grab those tapes and be like, oh, dad's jacket off to this. But I'd have to, I'd, my curiosity would get the better. The problem is like, you know, if you're just like a normal human being, right? <laughs> Let's say you're not fucking down in the dumps with it. And you're just watching pornography with normal sex in it. Yeah. Most ninety uh, percent of the population will get off to it, so you yeah. you don't want to like lean into it too hard, sort of thing. Yeah, you found it in your dad's sock drawer, like next to his unmentionable sort of thing. <laughs> whatever, whatever. <laughs> you know. Yeah. I, I don't think it's too egregious, although <laughs> it's it's strange. You know, when you go out there the next morning. Yeah. And he sort of knows that you've taken it away. And like <laughs> yeah. that first time you make eye contact with him. Yeah. And he's like 13 minutes, 24. I think that's where like whoever looks away first, mm. that, that's the first part. Like, you know, when, when, when you become a young man and your dad's getting older sort of thing, that's like the alpha moment. Whoever looks away first yeah. when the pornography is discovered, like your dad looks at you and he's like, you're alpha now. Yeah. <laughs> now um, you run the household. You're yeah. the first line of defense in the room. Yeah. Yeah, because he's a cuck. He's, cu- he's a cuck Clearly, to your he's, porn. He's a voice. <laughs> <laughs> it's now your... He's a cuck to my... It's now my porn. <laughs> now my I'm porn. not paying no late fees on this bitch. I'm not even rewinding it. You don't even give it back. Fuck you don't off, even dude. rewind it. Do you remember they used to charge you extra if you yeah. could rewind the tape? Yeah. Oh, man. 
That's funny. All right, we're going to wrap this one up. Um, thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Country Trucker Caps, for sponsoring this podcast. We said we weren't doing that. Yeah, we, we, <laughs> we, we've done it. Thank I, you very I much, uh, Country Trucker Caps, for supporting us. Um, we will see you next week. My name is Jack. That is Wade. Do you have a message to send off to the viewers, mate? Yeah, I'm less interested in my dad's porn and more interested in my gay uncle's porn. <laughs> that shit goes hard. <laughs>